You have been an innovator or a change agent, not only here at Rockefeller, but you've had an extraordinarily, extraordinarily diverse cross-section of roles, both in academia, you have worked on the public policy side, both for Citigroup and the White House. You've also uh, done uh, an extraordinary work with a number of different private and, and public organizations here. As you look at these different roles along your career, what was the hardest leadership transition for you? I think coming from Penn to Rockefeller, we had 30 some thousand employees at Penn. We were the largest private employer in Philadelphia. I learned that it is much harder to lead a small institution than it is a very complex, large organization because you're really directly interacting with all of your employees almost all the time. It really requires you to flex a different set of leadership muscles, and that took me some time to, to learn and to recognize. So many individuals are now taking these different career chapters. What, what advice would you give on, on honing those types of leadership skills you talked about? You know, we're hearing the politicians use it, so it sounds a little trite. Um, but there is a period at the beginning of really listening, whether it's a listening tour or not assuming that just because you're an experienced and successful leader, you can translate all of what you know into a very different sector. Some of it is highly generalizable and really can be repurposed for a new culture. But the, new, the leader in an entirely new sector really needs to, to learn to listen so I, I think that's an important lesson. And I think secondly, that you can never communicate too much and that they're looking to you to really understand both your vision, your, what you're passionate about. You, you need to demonstrate courage um, early on as a leader, but you need to tell them what you're doing as you're doing it. And sometimes leaders feel I'm showing it and I'm galvanizing people but they need to really understand it as well. So the more you can communicate in as many different ways as possible, I think the more effective you will be in that transition period. I would love to know, when, when you were entering college, what did you think you were gonna do? Um, be an interpreter at the UN. <laughs> I had taken a lot of languages uh, as a high school student and really thought I was very good. I had some facility, although I now realize how terrible I was. Um, but I took an introductory psychology course with a professor who totally changed my life. And so it really reinforced for me, first of all, it changed my whole career, but it reinforced for me the importance of teaching, the importance of education. 20 of my 22 years at Yale, I taught introductory psychology. Um, because I wanted to give back to students what had been so transformational for me. And I will still often in an airport or a train station meet a student who will come up to me and say, I had you for intro at Yale and you changed my life. And I mean, that's the greatest gift that anyone who's um, teaching in the broadest sense, this was in the more narrow sense, but we're all teachers, we all can be mentors, we all have a chance as leaders to change people's lives. And really understanding that and accepting that as part of the role as well, I think is what helps me to get up every day still and helps me to work in all these different sectors.